Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of De Facto Review. My name is Mogi, and I'm covering for Terence Benite as well. Uh, good evening, Mr. Jargo. Yep. Good evening. Good evening to everybody. Thank you for watching us. My name is Jargal, nicknamed De Facto, and we start our uh, Sunday night uh, review, right? Okay. Um, let's see what our topics of conversation are for tonight. Okay, uh, these are the three topics of conversation we have today with Mr. Jargo. Let's start with the first topic, which is we're continuing on from last week and talking about Airnet. And there's a term you uh, coined uh, last week in your weekly column called Airnet Villagism, sort of a phenomenon going on in Mongolia where uh, state-owned um, enterprises are being privatized without, uh, with unfairly to certain few individuals, and uh, this is what you called um, uh, this concept, Ertan Bilgism. The reason why we're continuing with this topic again is because last week, Thursday, uh, the president, uh, president held a conf uh, press conference to answer some of the questions raised by the deputy speaker when he talked about how um, the 49% stake in the state-owned uh, enterprise Erdnet, the Russia's, Russian government stake was sold to a private, uh, private Mongolian company called uh, Mongolian Copper Corporation. And in his statement, uh, the president said that um, somehow it seems, it seems as if uh, the deputy speaker, Mr. Nimdorj, and the finance minister, Mr. Cho Yun con are conspired to, uh, to bring this issue, uh, to bring some con controversy to this issue. And uh, Mr. Nimdorj also in, in uh, parliament session uh, rebutted some of the statements that the president made. Tell me what you meant exactly by the term Edinburgh and what it means to Mongolia. Well, uh, before we go there, let's talk about uh, the, the Mongolian government is not uh, talking about, if you have noticed, about the particular sale of Russians 49% to anybody else, mm -hmm. be it Mongolian, whatever. So we don't talk about that. The people are not talking about uh, dissolving the issue of that cell. Now the issue in the government in Mongolia is why this 49% has more right than 51% mm -hmm. due after this uh, particular so the, the decision is made by their former finance minister, etc. And even they said that uh, these people who made this sort of decisions are, um, are being investigated by anti-corruption agency. And uh, as you have mentioned about the president's speech, he was not, uh, uh, by the way, we have a week ago demanded, where is Mr. President? Why mm -hmm. you are not giving any comment? And uh, mm -hmm. it was nice to hear his comment, which was, uh, which was not very much substantial. This was just like another fight with in between Yam Dorch and Nilpil Dorch, etc. Uh, actually, we don't care on that part. Mm -hmm. We do care about this two years going on secret deal of large asset related trade from Russian side to Mongolian side. Mm -hmm. on, we are not against that, but we are against for having it all very secretly. Mm -hmm. And the president uh, had not commented on that part. One. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I see even bigger picture. That's why I wrote that article. Why I wrote the article? Because you see, in the society like Mongolia, where the corruption came and taken all political institutions, also transferred the corruption to economic institutions. And economic institutions, instead of serving the public, now serving the political institutions. Mm -hmm. And Vice versa, it should be altogether serving the people. Now it's just serving the political institutions and political elite. 
and certain uh, rich individuals. Yes, and uh, then what happens is that corruption is growing like a cancer to everything, to everybody across horizontally, vertically, in the government walls, right? In the institutional, uh, political and economic institutions walls. Then when we cannot stop it, it came to such a level that now we cannot stop anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, I take an example of one individual who were ma able to uh, manage uh, getting these whole institutions across political parties, across political and economic institutions, having the decisions that he wants. Mm -hmm. So it's called, because this, uh, the actor beyond that is Mr. Ritten Bilek, who is the chairman of the TDB Bank. So I call it a new phenomena of Mongolian democracy and Mongolian corruption. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, and uh, I don't exclude that there will be another Ritten Bilek, third Ritten Bilek, who are coming and creating kind of monopoly in their own sectors. And why it is growing to the new phenomena? Before, you see, a guy was, uh, if you are rich, you were donating a million dollars to your political party, the guy becoming ministers too mm. in their own industry where he is businesses. We have so several was, cases in the current government as well. Yes, uh, but in this case of this gentleman, uh, this guy, Irkin Bilek, he is taken across the industries, mining industries, major mining assets now belongs to his group. Mm -hmm. Largest bank is his group. Mm -hmm. Ulaanbaatar Bank, former, uh, the bank which the current Prime Minister Inkbold had created when he the was- speaker. The speaker. Uh, yeah, the, the speaker created when he was uh, Ulaanbaatar mayor with our money. He mm -hmm. had created first Ulaanbaatar fund, foundations, and with that money he created bank, insurance company, and eventually this man now owns 99% of mm -hmm. that bank. And then now also uh, he is planning to buy power station number three, four, Baganur, and uh, Shivya Ovo, they all stayed on assets. Acqu all these things, according to the speaker, of the parliament, Mr. Nyam Dorch, who I believe he has a full responsibility uh, to disclose, the, he was disclosing all the materials and he has full responsibility. I'm, I'm based on what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So so when they sort of phenomena will be a lot, two or three, written the leg, then we will have monopoly. Mm -hmm. And we will have a monopolistic prices and forget about free, free competition forget about uh, equal chance to other companies, other uh, people. So it is not the society we want to see. Mm -hmm. So, but unfortunately the corruption came to such a level that I'm afraid we cannot manage anymore. Mm -hmm. And something interesting that, <coughs> that uh, developed uh, last Friday, something related to Internet as well, was the, the, the arbitration case in London where uh, Standard Bank, a South African uh, Standard big international Charter bank, um, sued um, Erdnet Mining Corporation because of a loan that Erdnet Mining Corporation guaranteed on behalf of a private company that Standard Bank lent money, money to called Just Group. And Just Group, as, you know, as we know, several years ago declared bankruptcy. So the bill, the loan was left to the guarantor, which was Erdnet Mining Corporation. And now it, there's an article uh, developing that uh, that they uh, lost the arbitration case, so the original loan was 109 million, and the arbitration uh, court said you have, they have to pay interests on on the loan as well, which was 51 billion interests and fees, and also the legal fees that the Standard Bank incurred, which I'm which I, I understand to be around 20 million, mm -hmm. so that's around almost 180 million or so, 170, 80 million or so that Erdnet Mining Corporation will have to pay. So this is so, something, an example of, of corruption. Old, this is, uh, the loan was given uh, 2000, uh, the government before 2012, yep. which was MPP. Uh, the group, just group, was saying that this, uh, that he had signed himself that mm -hmm. uh, signature for the guaranteed letter uh, which turned out is not, 
and the signature of former Ethernet CEO is to be the origin, authentic. original mm -hmm. one, authentic. Now the Ethernet or through Ethernet all Mongolians are to pay that much mm -hmm. money now. This is second case, I remember. First case was the Hang Resources right. Company mm -hmm. that also sued Mongolian government for 300 million US dollar for just taking away their license and giving to Russians. And they have raised the fund, they couldn't do anything more in, the, in front of shareholders. They had to sue the government and finally we had paid to pay 100 million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we not only Mongolia pay the big huge foreign bond debt in their interests or guarantee by development bank, but also we suddenly start to pay this sort of money and we don't know these people who signed who made this fraud. Mm -hmm. They are not taking any responsibility. And they are, they are beneficiaries of this whole thing. They got, we don't know how much they got money on that. But then, you know, these politicians get, the, or state-owned companies get the money, benefit everything, and they disappear. Mm -hmm. Then we pay. Mm -hmm. How about that? <laughs> and I don't know how many other bills to come. So it is again a kind of um, facet of that corruption we face. And you, you, the, the bad thing is, if we don't stop that corruption, then it will, ha it will take all society also. So we will be, in, uh, we'll be controlled by only a few families for a few uh, and then the remaining will have a no equal chance at all. This is not that system we want to see, that society we want to live. Mm -hmm. so, but however, unfortunately, because the corrupt politicians, decision makers, we, we are keep staying in this mud for quite some time. Interesting uh, topic as always. I'm sure we'll continue to talking about this issue as, as the government um, uh, task force uh, that they set up uh, to investigate this sale that will announce their final verdicts. Um, let's move on to our the next topic, which is the 2017 budget bill that the new government has introduced, submitted to Parliament. And according to the government's bill, um, the new total um, revenue for next year is projected to be 5.9, almost 6 um, trillion togrix. Um, expenditure is 8.6 trillion togrix. Uh, which means the next year's budget deficit will be around 2.6 trillion Togrix. To me, it seems it still seems um, excessive amount of budget deficit, which means that the government will have to borrow more than uh, 1.23 billion dollars next year just to fill this budget deficit. And what interesting to me was that the you know, when the government also uh, created new social welfare programs such as the old age stipend or something that then they're going to spend uh, 20.5 billion turgrix on it and they are going to continue the child allowances but a little more reasonable than targeting only poor and uh, poor families and also they, they're going to create um, a new student loan fund um, this will cost the budget around 101 billion uh, billion to next year as well. So it seems that the, the government has not been able to cut the deficit as much as, as economists and analysts would like, but they've also created these social welfare programs that doesn't seem to be a very smart thing to do when we have these kind of economic difficult situations. My guess is because it's uh, related to the upcoming local elections, maybe even related to next year's election, presidential elections. What's your thought on this, on this uh, 2017 budget bill? Let's put, put separately two things. One is first the budget itself. Mm -hmm. The other is current situation with foreign debt, or mm. with all type of government debt. If you take the budget, th this budget sounds like modest as modest as last year or year before, you know. But I don't believe our budget. Because it's like an endless talk. There is even a one talk show in one TV program called Endless Talk. Mm. And then it's some kind of a fair tale. Because at this time of the year, by law, they have to approve a budget. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And that budget is that fairy tale they, they're mentioning. That they've submitted. Look at, look at this. Now just the, the budget to renew next year, total is going to be about six billion. Mm -hmm. But our foreign you know, domestic debt payment for next year is more than six billion. Yes. So you can imagine how artificial is this mm -hmm. uh, first. I'm saying first because Mongolia has now become a very strange country and strange government because they keep first approving the budget, then amendment they're doing first amendment, then they do the second amendment. Mm -hmm. And th what the budget is this if you do three, four budget amendments mm -hmm. all the time? It looks like these uh, parliamentarians are there all the sitting to amend uh, the budget. <laughs> uh, see, uh, that's why I don't believe that this is the uh, correct one. And the main reason is in Mongolia, because all those people who approve budgets are still also ministers who execute right. that budget. And they, because everybody wants to add more money to their own constituency, mm -hmm. at whatever cost. So that's why the budget is being like this all the time, like rubber, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, first, uh, from amendment to amendment, they keep changing the ceiling of the foreign debt, right. or, or total debt to the GDP, right. and also <coughs> the deficit to the GDP. They keep changing. What the hell is the, the law is there if you keep changing all these uh, limits all the time and they are putting all this budget into the change it conditions? Right. The, the original fiscal stability law, one of the great good things that came out of the 2009 economic crisis was you the fiscal stability 2%. law, which said Budget deficit cannot be more than 2% of the GDP. That was the best lying <laughs> law ever I've seen. And every year they increase. Now it's about 10%. Eh? And uh, according to the bill, it's supposed, it's going, it's supposed to be 9.9% .9 of the GDP. Mm. And this is a number that um, you and I uh, probably will not believe me. They'll probably change it as well. It will be quite big change. Mm -hmm. And also now we should tell about the foreign debt for which is coming and which will be a big burden on the budget. Mm -hmm. Now, what up to today, what, what is clear that the government announced it officially said that they will borrow more money right. and to pay the old money. So we get a new debt to pay old debt. Mm -hmm. And we will ask, and now our um, foreign uh, minister of finance minister and the bank of Mongol bank governor are both in uh, DC mm -hmm. now to uh, to agree to sign maybe this uh, IMS standby program, mm -hmm. which we were expecting for a long time. So these are coming, and also they have to borrow. Even IMF is borrowing them two billion dollars, which is not enough. Mm -hmm. Then they have to borrow from our south neighbor which don't talk about much different conditions. They go a lot with big money, with uh, almost no conditions. Uh, ex I mean, well, there's a, always a hidden, the, hidden the, the, the projects, yeah. they go together. The right. Certain things, they, they should come. Oh. The projects, Railway, people, labor. Yeah. And then they will ask Japan for sure, the Asian Development Bank, World Bank for other discounted mm -hmm. uh, loan or aid. Mm -hmm. That's what I, how I see they will get try to ends meet. Mm -hmm. uh, but however, during this almost 100 days of this cabinet, they made very surprisingly good one decision that I very much applaud, which is um, all company which has a revenue under than 1.5 billion Tugriks, mm. they will pay not 10 percent, only 1 percent tax mm -hmm. on the revenue, mm -hmm. which is a very good uh, case. Uh, but I don't know how in the reality it will be there. No, plus anyway, 86% uh, of the companies in the country under this ceilings right. anyway. The uh, concerning that there's some social costs you have raised, it's very controversial because pension fund is to be given back to people who paid pension during their working years. Mm -hmm. But this time now, they say, no, everybody under 70 years old will get paid some money, which is called a giving from the government, some kind of. <laughs> and I don't old age allows. <laughs> yes, all that, I don't understand this uh, economic mechanism. Mm. Because why people who had never worked but get 70 years old should be paid pension? Mm -hmm. Doesn't work in an economic way. And it is at the cost of people who have been paying all their life, their pension, pensions. So 
This are, uh, the other thing is, remember they have decreased the children allowances to one third of the children about, uh, mm -hmm. well, less than, more than one third. But uh, what, what will be the difference? How you make a differentiation between that target group and not target group? Mm -hmm. It is hell of war because Mongolia is not, has no system that individual is paying tax based on their family income. We don't have the system. Mm. So it will be very hard for them to classify whether he is uh, or that child supposed or not supposed to receive uh, money. Mm -hmm. mm. <coughs> okay. Um, but to me, this, all, uh, this budget bill is right before the election. We have to always remember we're still in a... Uh, election campaign season. Yeah, this local election we are now uh, making uh, October October 19th, 19th uh, at the Somon level or Horo level or the district level, district yeah. level of the city, Somon level in IMAX, who will uh, elect uh, our officials who will mm -hmm. represent the particular local people mm -hmm. through their decision making body. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's very important election, but somehow Mongolians don't pay attention to that. Right. Very little attention to this local elections, and less money goes there. But a very funny thing is, there was a guy who was giving in campaign speech in the one Somong that, why you are coming? Why are you coming to the uh, Somong leadership? He said, "Oh, I will decrease inflation in our <laughs> Somong." <laughs> so th this kind of discussions. Going on there. Only in the summer, increase <laughs> <laughs> inflation. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, at that level, important to uh, family living, everyday living, the conditions, mm -hmm. maintenance, heating, utilities, all this, uh, the, or the um, waste management. These mm -hmm. decisions are made at that level, and at that level, these sort of people are coming. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we. We need, on one hand, direct democracy. On the other mm -hmm. side, on the other hand, we need a lot of knowledge, confidence from local uh, voters' side, local inhabitants, and on the other side, those who is running for mm -hmm. local offices. And um, if we, one interesting thing that I'm that's in my mind is, if we uh, agree to get borrow money from IMF, World Bank, I'm afraid that they will IMF will asks the government, the parliament, to actually even decrease the budget deficit from, from what the bill is. So what's the point of approving a bill if only in a few months we'll have to cut the budget again? No, this is the for yeah. bill for the sake of the bill, yeah. budget for the sake of the budget. So that will, they, the had, they need to re <coughs> reconsider again. And, uh, and, and they always amend the, uh, the budget right before a major holiday. Sagansar, the first budget amendment. Yeah. Nadam, second budget amendment. <laughs> All right. Um, let's move on to our um, next uh, topic of conversation, which is uh, constitutional reform. And what well, we've been talking about reforming, uh, amending our constitution to give more power to the ex executive branch and take, uh, take give less uh, power to the president. And um, last uh, uh, parliament, um, four years, there was a serious talk about amending the budget, amending the constitution. There was even a, several task forces, working groups, many, many working groups created just to study or even uh, uh, draft uh, the con constitution reform bill. And uh, some of the problems we have with our governance, uh, political corruption is, I think, related also to the way our constitution is, how the political power is divided between different branches of government. Tell me your thoughts. That's the problem. We, we keep uh, criticizing that about this uh, not proportional way, not independent, non-independent, non-dependent way of uh, these three powers. Mm -hmm. And actually this executive power and legislative power is confused now. Mm -hmm. Because one guy sitting here today is legislator and next morning he is sitting as executor. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if we have 400, 600 parliament members like Canada, UK, on big population, a lot of parliamentarians and five, 10 uh, becoming uh, member, uh, ministers, cabinet members, and mm -hmm. that's okay. Mm -hmm. But in the country like Mongolia with 
only 76 seats in the parliament and 20 of them are becoming ministers, it, must, it is not okay because yeah. it's keep confusing and it's creating corruption by influences. And, uh, and now, uh, as, as, we, as we talked before, at the beginning of our program, that this, uh, political institutions are so much having impact on economic institutions, which is a mostly part of the uh, executive power, mm -hmm. they, they are creating, and uh, well, because it is not cut, that corruption so much. Mm -hmm. And the other not clear thing in our power is presidency, president right. position. Because on one side in our constitution, it says president is more symbolic. Right. He is expressing the unity of Mongolian people. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in the real life, more than that. This man, uh, this position is so become so important. Like this, uh, our two na our two neighbors have similar, very not clear functions of president, mm -hmm. and our president also like becoming like this too. But however, Mongolia is a democracy; it's a consisting of many political parties, and we uh, people choose one of them. It is not the case in our two neighbor countries. And then uh, the uh, president, for example, in case of uh, Erdinet deal, he played the most important role, more than that he had agreed with uh, Mr. President Putin about that deal. Mm -hmm. yes. Then now, if it is went in a, such a secret way uh, against the rules we have in this country, then will the president have any responsibility for that? Looks like not, because he's a symbolic figure, and you cannot have a symbolic figure for any responsibility to the whole. So I think uh, Mongolia, along with this double daily issue, we have to make clear on that. Uh, it is Japan or Germany. Germany is more federative, uh, federal federation. country, <coughs> mm -hmm. federation, so it's one issue. But Japan is more closer. It has two parliaments, mm -hmm. right, senators and the parliamentarians, representative office, and senator, which is based, selected on, in some countries, on merit even more best. If it is the e executive power like this, the legislative power like this, then executive power to be one person, executive prime minister, or we can call that person as a president like in Germany, uh, in the US. Mm -hmm. But it should be very clear who must take responsibility for the actions which is very muddy, not clear in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. um, me personally, I want to see the prime minister more like the way it is in, in Japan, where the prime minister takes responsibility Solely for the whole government, for the whole executive branch, for everything that's wrong or even good, also good with the country as well. When, yeah. the, when the economy is struggling, the prime minister takes responsibility. When the, the economy is growing, the prime minister takes the merit. And to have to him to have more power, including dissolving the parliament. Right, exactly. Yep. Well, a lot of things to do, and for Mongolian democracy, f we need a lot to go, and we need to go together with more knowledge, more inspiration, but most importantly, with more hope that we can solve our problems, we can combat these corruptions, we can hold responsible these people who are misusing our. Mm -hmm. uh, property and interests. And that, is, uh, that all starts with personal responsibility, personal uh, participation in politics, personal, and you know, going out to uh, polling stations and voting. Yep. And I'm, my, my, my fear is that you know, this local election will probably have one of the lowest turnouts ever because this is only the local election. Previous elections, they were always uh, uh, paired with uh, parliament or IAMEC or uh, capital city council elections, but this is only a district with some okay, elections so as well. With that, um, I think we need to conclude, right? Right. Uh, and uh, we, we are very thankful for everybody watching our program. Uh, we try to make independent review analysis for important events of last week. We are streamlining uh, our program live on Facebook for our international viewers. So again, thank you very much, and uh, have a good evening. Have a good evening, everyone, and see you next week. So, done. <laughs> <laughs>